And joining me now on set is my NBC News Capitol Hill colleague, Sahil Kapoor. Savante Myrick, the former Democratic mayor of Ithaca, New York, and now the president of People for the American Way. And Sarah Chamberlain, the president of the Republican Main Street Partnership. And we're going to start off by saying that even though Savante and Sarah are both from upstate New York and are not Buffalo Bills fans, we did not kick them off the set for that. So go Giants, go Giants. We're, we're going to go forward anyway, <laughs> despite that error in judgment. Uh, so Sarah, uh, let's uh, start with you, because you're our, the Republican on our panel today. Uh, do you believe uh, the DeSantis uh, talking point here that the reports of his demise are greatly exaggerated. Does he still have a shot here despite what the polls are telling us? I think he absolutely does. I think he has to speed it up quickly, though. I think his wife, uh, her little commercial spot today might help with suburban women. But yes, I think there's absolutely a possibility. But as I said, he's, he's got to kick this into gear. I mean, people are, are starting to, to uh, think he, he doesn't have do, it. Do you buy the argument, though, that fundraising tells us everything? Because I sure does. I do, I do remember of another Florida governor who raised a lot of money and never got out of the gates there's, and lost to Donald Trump as well. There's so. been a few of them, but <laughs> yeah. it, it certainly helps that he's raised a lot of money. Yeah, yeah without question. Okay, so uh, Sahil, you know, he, the sense is his, his shot this week at Trump was him not being a team player, mm -hmm. that he's not on board uh, with the Republican Party. I believe we have uh, a sound of him saying that. Let's play that. Also been attacked more than anybody, as you know, Will. You know, Donald Trump has spent over 20 million attacking me. That's more than he spent supporting Republican candidates in last year's midterm elections. At the end of the day, people do want to win, though. Uh, and, you know, you can't win with just Republican voters. I think we showed in Florida, you know, if you want a big victory, you got to win independent voters. you got to win people who haven't voted for our, our party in the last several cycles. Is that something that voters care about or is it just something consultants care about? It's not something that Republican primary voters care about. It's a niche message tailored to Republican consultants. I'm sure there are local, you know, or I guess national uh, Republican elected officials in D.C. who care about the unity message. I'm sure there's some Republican donors who might care about it. But Republican primary voters do not care about it. If they did, Donald Trump would never be the nominee to begin with. His entire campaign in 2016 was predicated on the Republican establishment as terrible and has to be taken down. And I'm the guy to do it. And they loved that. That. Mm -hmm. Now his message for 2020 is, I'm going to finish the job and root out those, you know, Romney, Ryan, McCain right. elements that are still um, somewhat of a force within the party. The Republican primary base does not care about Ronald Reagan's 11th right. commandment anymore. Okay. Yeah, thou shalt right. not speak ill of another Republican. So, Zavante, uh, you had to have been rolling your eyes when you heard Ron DeSantis make the argument that his policies in Florida are going to appeal to independent and Democratic <laughs> voters. I mean, we're talking about a guy who's held very conservative positions on things like abortion. Uh, he just had this very controversial video on LGBTQ rights or the lack thereof. I, I, doesn't this actually make him more toxic than Trump in a general election? Absolutely. And yeah. this is the key. You know, Trump has always been very good at riding this fine line between the sad and the unsaid. And here, Ron DeSantis, signing a six-week abortion bill, was sending a signal to voters all across the country that if president, he would ban abortion nationwide. That's what a six-week six bill does. That's going to freak people out, that he needs to win the support of. I think that's why he's not climbing in the polls. But I agree with you. I think that this thing is not over. The fact that Trump is not cracking 50% in the early polls means that there is an opening. Now, DeSantis is yes on the campaign trail is coming across as shrill. And yes, some of his stances like banning uh, LGBT education and banning abortion are freaking out voters. But there's still a chance for him or somebody else to make a run there. Okay. Can I jump in on that really quickly? Yeah. There's an element of this that, you know, everything old is new again. There's some parts of the DeSantis campaign that remind me of Rubio from 2016, that I'm the electable one. Look at the people attacking me. Look at the enemies. Mm -hmm. They're doing it because they fear me, and therefore mm -hmm. I can win independent voters. People can debate whether that's true, but that is his message. On He's also taking a page from the Ted Cruz playbook in 2016, running to Trump's right and believing that there are these ideological motivated, ideologically motivated Republicans who will look at his positions to the right of Trump on abortion, on immigration, on LGBT rights, and think he's the guy. We'll see if it works. Yeah, and Sarah, there aren't enough of them. Yeah, well, or, or Ted Cruz would have won. Right. So that, to your point, so. let's take. A, we're going to. I want to show you a poll that I, I believe we have that uh, we asked about issues related to things like this in, our, in a June poll. And without saying that they're for Trump, re Republican voters are pretty loudly saying they like Donald Trump, right? I mean, take a look at these numbers. The GOP primary voters, uh, would you vote for a candidate who says Trump won in 2020? 11 points to the positive there. Uh, but then some of these more traditional, what you would think would be uh, traditional Republican positions supporting more aid to Ukraine, that gets a negative 24%. Uh, these are all 
right out of the Trump version of the Republican Party's playbook. Mm -hmm. How does anybody else stand a chance where this is where the energy is in the Republican primary? Right now they don't. But, but again, we've got some more time to go. So let's not write off some of the other candidates. I mean, I think Tim Scott's sitting there with great potential to move up pretty quickly. We'll have to just see how his campaign goes. But there are three or four others that could come up out of nowhere and, uh, and surprise us all. How important do you think the debate plays in all of this then? I think it's extremely important, though I don't think Trump will be on the stage. But does that help or hurt him? Does that give an opening to someone? It gives an opening to someone, and hopefully someone will take that opening, and then Trump will have to be there for the second yeah, debate. Interesting. All right, let's talk about Marjorie Taylor Greene now. I saw Hill, one of our favorite topics as Capitol Hill correspondents. Uh, kind of a weird dynamic here. They had a vote a couple weeks ago. Apparently she was booted, but now no one is officially saying that she was booted. What do we make of this? Yeah, I never thought I'd live to see the day where Marjorie Taylor Greene gets cast out as a rhino squish. Apparently <laughs> the reason that they voted her out was a proximity to Speaker McCarthy that right. she's been supportive of him this time around. Uh, the Freedom Caucus is supposedly about 35 to 40 members. About 20 of them have been very actively confrontational with Kevin McCarthy. Mm -hmm. If this is the basis for kicking her out, then I wonder what happens to the other 20 members, mm -hmm. including founding member of the Freedom Caucus, Jim Jordan, right. who's taking right. a very right. similar approach. But there is a bizarre element to this. The Freedom Caucus leadership is not saying whether she's out. Yeah. Tweet it. Call right. her. Tell us. Yeah. Speak. Yeah, and it was interesting. I talked to a Freedom Caucus source who, who told me that the Freedom Caucus's biggest problem is that they don't play by their own rules. So they have a rule, <laughs> a mechanism to do this, but even the chairman, Scott Perry, is afraid to say that the vote, which we're told was overwhelming to boot her from the, the caucus, is enough. Could have something to do with the fact that she's one of their biggest fundraisers. But, Savante, I want to read uh, something from Green Statement, have you react to it. This is what she said. I fight every single day in the halls of Congress against the hate America Democrats who are trying to destroy this country. I will work with anyone who wants to secure our border, protect our children inside the womb, and after they are born, end the forever wars and do the work to save this country. Uh, how do you, it seems like she's saying two things here. I will work with anybody except basically everybody that she's talking about. Yeah, and of course that's the, you know, this is the star treatment, right? This is the, you can't kick me out of the band. I am the band. <laughs> and I wish I lived in a country where Marjorie Taylor Greene was not the band. But... In this case, when we're talking about the Freedom Caucus and the House majority, which Kevin McCarthy holds by razor's edge, she's probably right that the caucus needs her more than she needs the caucus. And uh, their attempt to expel her is probably too little too late. She's bigger, as you mentioned. She's a better fundraiser than most of the people who are left in that caucus. And uh, I think that this... Squabble, you know, the reason I'm smiling, and I, mm -hmm. I probably shouldn't again, because it's not healthy for the state of our democracy. But uh, any day in which a fight between Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert mm -hmm. is in front of the American people and the American voters is a good day for President Biden's re-election campaign and the hopes of Democrats to retake the House of Representatives. Because it looks like the meanest kids from middle school fighting over the dumbest things instead of fighting to make Americans' lives better. I mean, it must frustrate you as a Republican, right, Sarah? Sure does, absolutely. Because our members really are the majority makers, and mm -hmm. they're, try they're there trying to do what's right for the country. They're tired of these little fights, son. I mean, it's ridiculous. So, what those two women did was absurd. But, it really was. But to that point, what do your members do here? Because I mean, Sahil and I talked to a lot of them, mm -hmm. you know, these more moderate Republicans that are there because they want to get something done, who have a right-leaning view of the world. But it seems in many cases they're just drowned out by the noise from these members on the far right. How do they assert themselves uh, as we go forward for the last part of the Kevin McCarthy speakership? Well, they are drowned out as far as the media goes, but they're not drowned out as far as legislation goes. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the bill to impeach um, Biden got moved to committee. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've had a lot of great successes because they do stick together. They don't have squabbles on the floor. They don't vote each other in and out of, of the Main Street caucus. <laughs> um, but they've had wonderful victories. It just, you know, none of them are getting a lot of media. You know, they're not going to say, you know, kind of crazy stuff on TV. Right, right. And so. then, uh, they played a major role in getting that debt sailing bill they over sure the finish did. line and averting a, a disaster for sure. Terrific conversation, everybody. Sahil, Savante, Sarah, we appreciate all being here. Despite your lack of Bills fandom, we'll uh, work on that before we come back again. <laughs> Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.